let's dedicate a shrine to corn. And for that, we need skulls, of course. I'm gonna have this nice centerpiece that is a beastman herdstone and lots and lots and lots of dead Cadian bits. First, I'll just quickly assemble this herdstone. There, done. And I admit, by himself, it looks a bit too much like Age of Sigma. Let's take a look at some of these details. Of course, you got the head of the Stormcast Eternal over here, and there's nothing high tech about all of this. There's no guns, no armor, no nothing hanging on the rock itself. Another Stormcast Eternal head over there, and then there's a bunch of weapons over here. Also, again, low tech, no special weapons, but I think it's really easy to fix. First of all, these horns, I can hang stuff off here, like people, I mean, like armored guys, Cadians. We'll instantly turn it 40k and these weapons here at the base actually like the idea so i can just put a bunch of last guns chain axes power swords stuff like that i can put it all here and decorate the base a little bit more with 40k bits and pieces and then maybe i don't even have to scrape off this stormcast eternal bits except maybe that head it's, it's a little bit too visible and too recognizable now anybody who sees it goes hey that's age of sigma it's not 40k for the rest i think i can hide it well enough but we need a lot more. This, this is not enough. I said I had lots and lots of Cadians. So let's see if I can arrange these Cadians into a nice sort of coordinate skull pattern. And I'll just speed this up. Okay, something like this. I think it's fairly recognizable as a coronate skull. It might be a little bit too thin. I might have to kill off a couple more Cadians to get this to work together. But I think this is a good first step. And if I have this here and then together with the rock, we're starting to make something of a corn shrine. Now, of course, this needs a pile of heads and piles of skulls. So it looks something like this. Rock over here, nice focus, the corn icon over there. And then I got this pile of Cadian heads. Not skulls yet, because, you know, before they become skulls, they're heads. So I was thinking if I can make a nice pile of this somewhere right here in the center of this corn skull icon. It also frees up a lot of these bits and pieces that I can then use to make these arms a little bit longer, make it maybe a little bit bigger. But I quite like to keep it sort of, I don't know, a rectangle, or maybe expand it a little bit more and have some piles of skulls and trophies, maybe some more uh, 40k equipment, so some guns, some weapons to sort of make the whole rock thing a bit more 40k. But I need a base for this. There, a bit of scrap wood will do from my photo booth that I made so I can make nicer photos for my Instagram profile. And, and also for this, of course. Now I'm just gonna start gluing these guys down, the bits and pieces, try to make that coronate skull with some super glue, and then we can sort of map out what's gonna be on there for the rest. So the icon is basically done. It's okay, it's not exactly how I want it because I think it's just too flat and it needs to get a little bit higher. I need to add a little few pieces here and there to sort of make it more like there's a jumble of body parts and not just everything laid out perfectly on the floor. But I'm first gonna work on this pile of heads here in the center and for that I just have a load of Cadian heads that are gonna get glued here into a massive pile. There, a nice pile of heads here in the center. Let me tilt this up a little bit so maybe you guys can get a better view of what I'm seeing here. And I now got a nice pile of heads over here. It looks relatively stable. I mean, they probably have to stack them without super glue if they make the actual shrine. So I have to make it look like this could actually stay in place like this. And I think it looks okay. But we need a couple more heads because of course they're not doing this perfectly. They might roll one somewhere that's where it's not supposed to go. But hey, who cares? You're a corn berserker. And I just ran out of heads. So I need to get a few more. So just a couple of heads here and there that kind of you know, roll off the pile and then get stuck here together with the rest of the body parts. I think that would look cool. Something that can roll over here and land up against the rock to sort of connect the pile with that rock. And just to be clear, the rock isn't glued down yet. The, the whole piece that I want to paint it separately from whatever I have here on this plate and sticking it to there right now would just make painting so much harder so there's no point so I'm just gonna leave this off there for now and then later on I can slide it exactly in place where I want because now I got this little marker in the form of a Cadian head a um, couple more skulls a couple more hands I also snipped off a couple of weapons that I'm gonna decorate the base of this rock with now here as well, I'm just gonna add a little arm on top of this. And I'm gonna add a few more of these bits and pieces over here and over there and wherever I think that it could use a little bit more, I don't know, 3D relief rather than having it all flat on the ground. And then I'll show you results. 
Now I have here a chainsaw and I snipped off the tip just to make it look like it's damaged because I assume that whoever's building the shrine, if they could get a proper working chainsaw, they would probably use it themselves. And this way I can cover up a few of these obvious Sigmar weapons such as this. Actually, I think I'm just going to scrape this off for a second. Make it nice and flat so that my guns can go on there. And then I just add a few last guns here and there. And that will make it look more like it's 40k, more like some of these weapons are actually from the Cadians that are lying in front of it. I just have to find some good stable positions to put these in. And I just slather it with the plastic glue, the liquid cement from Tamiya, and it will fit nicely in place. I'm going to add a few more of these here and there, sort of on the side of this rock as well to just really make this more 40k. It's the one thing that I fear in this kit bash, to be honest, that the rock will be too obviously Age of Sigmar. You know, the rest is obvious. There's Cadians lying, there's guns, there's a chainsword now. But I think the rock is the biggest problem in this kit bash to make it sort of fit into the universe. But I'll keep going with these guns and show the results. Really, what could be more 40k than a Space Marine? So that's what I did. I just hung a Space Marine from the top with this uh, little hobby chain here. Uh, it has some blood icono iconography, blood angels iconography, and I just lost his helmet here in the fire, but that one, ah, it's come out. It's gonna have pride of place somewhere here in front and center. Of course, he's not having a head anymore because, you know, corn and all that stuff. I still wanna sort of 40k this up a little bit more, and I got these little pipes over here that come from the Inceptor's kit, and I'm just gonna make it look like the flames here are fueled in some way with these hoses going in there. Now I need a couple of skull piles and I'm just gonna put little pieces of rubble in place and then sort of drape the skulls around it because I, I don't really want to spend half an hour gluing 25 skulls in place and you know it gets boring. So let me get these guys. I'm just gonna put like three, four together, make a little skull pile out of it and see if I can decorate the space with something more than just skulls. So we got a little skull pile over here and over here I'm just gonna glue down another piece of rubble. And just to keep track of everything I'm using, this little piece comes from the Cadian Command Sprue and this piece here comes from the uh, Space Marine Eliminators uh, kit. And of course all the skulls from most amazing box that Games Workshop has ever made, the skull pack. So here's gonna be another little pile of skulls. Now personally I think we don't have enough banners in 40k, especially the Primaris Marines, they don't have banners on their backpacks, they're just walking around all naked. So I'm rectifying that situation here and I think a couple of banners on both sides, one of each side, maybe a couple more in the back, that gives this a nice little Cornish Chaos vibe. And these banners, they come from the Chaos Marauder kit and I believe the Chaos Warrior kit, but I don't know, this one I cut off so long ago, I can't remember where it's from, but I believe it's Chaos Warriors, because these are some super old bits. This is boxes that I bought 25 years ago. Uh, they need a couple of skulls around the bases, and I also starting to feel that you can't really see it when it's coming from top-down camera. So let me lift this up a little bit and show you what it looks like so far. It's starting to look pretty good already. I just feel like there needs to be a little bit more corn iconography. Now, I might be misjudging this because it's not painted. And of course, with loads of blood and gore and stuff, it starts to become more cornate. But I have these two pieces over here. And if I have them in my bit box, I might as well use them. This is something like a banner, I believe, from Age of Sigmar, or an icon from Age of Sigmar. And this one, I don't know. I have no idea where this came from anymore. Might be from Age of Sigmar, might be from something else. I have no clue. But I think this one will fit nicely on top of the herdstone because then this sort of looks more cornate and it references like these horns. You have two in you know on top of each other, makes it look less more less than a beastman and more like it's part of corn. And then the other one, I was thinking maybe, but I'm not 100 percent sure, to put it here as sort of a fire grill. In front of that blocks off the fire a little bit i don't know if that's a good idea because i kind of want that fire over there that has, has a lot of bright light coming out of it sort of as a focus point for this piece and if you put this in front of it you're not going to see it anymore but then what else am i going to do with this so maybe i need to have a little think about this one but that one's going on top for sure it's the next day i've been thinking about it and i just don't see a place where i can put this corn icon at the moment I think what I should do is just trim down this board, the base that I have, because I'm not going to fill this up. It would be cool if I can have something like pews, like, like in a church, but I don't think that really works for 40k. 
So I'm just gonna cut this a little bit to size and give it a little bit of a randomized edge so it's not a perfect uh, rectangle. I think that would blend better when I put this on a table next to some terrain. It's not like a perfect, perfectly square. And then I can add a lot of basing material like some rubble, some rocks and bits and pieces. And then I think I can stick this corn icon somewhere in the rubble. I also feel that there's stuff missing here on the sides and here in the back. But again, with proper basing material, a pile of rubble, some loose skulls here and there, maybe a little bit of chain here and there. I think I can fill it out nicely and make it look pretty cool. So. I'm gonna go outside, saw this, and we'll come back after that. And a quick spray of this piece, because it's time to paint. And if you're enjoying the video so far, give a like, let me know that you enjoy this, and I'll make more. Yeah, win-win. So here I got the cadence and the flags, the stone is separate, I'm gonna paint that differently. I'm just gonna do a very, very, very quick cadian paint scheme, and I've had experience with this. I had a video on how to paint cadence with less than 10 paints and another video where I'm showing a bunch of different paint schemes that you can do with your cadence. All super quick, all contrast, and so this is also gonna be super fast contrast. First of all, I take Skeleton Horde, and that just goes over all of these bodies, no matter if it's armor, boots, leather pieces, guns, doesn't matter, it's all Skeleton Horde for now. Then Militarum Green for all of the armor bits, the helmets, the chest, and so on and so forth, guns as well. Snakebite leather for all the leather straps, belts, pouches. Some contrast black legion for the boots and little bits of metal parts. And then finally, rock art flesh for any of the exposed skin. Nice desaturated sort of skin color. Because yeah, if they've been lying here for a while, there isn't much blood in these limbs anymore. I really like painting Cadians, even if they're dismembered bodies. It's such a cool paint scheme. It's so clear what these guys were before they were lying here. No for the Blood God. I just wanna do a little vibe check of if I like this sort of composition and the colors. So far, I think it's going pretty well. Uh, I spray painted the rock and everything around it with just a Dunkel Grau from Vallejo, which is black, but not exactly black, slightly light, lighter, a little bit of blue in there. And I think it's starting to look pretty cool. Let me turn this around so you guys can see it on that camera. Let me see where you guys, there you go. I got a pretty decent view of it. I think it's starting to look pretty decent, but I feel like I need to do some basing material first to get a better impression of what it looks and feels like before I start figuring out how I'm gonna paint this rock, because the rock is gonna be pretty focus point as well. And I have to do the base before I can dirty up and grime these bodies here and add blood effects, because of course the blood will spill over onto the base. So what I've got here is some uh, base ready grim dark city rubble from Geek Gaming Scenics. Just a little box of this. Oh, it's basically just grit and dirt and sand. And that sticks to this plate with a lot of PVA glue. So all you have to do is apply a lot of PVA glue, add some water, and with an old, old brush, just spread it out. And then I can shake this on here. And it will look like this. Pretty cool, pretty easy, quick fix for such a big area of space. Like I'm not gonna paint this, I'm not gonna add a lot of detail to it. I just want to have rubble so that if I put it on a table with a bunch of terrain around it, ruins around it, it will look like it fits in there. So I'm just gonna quickly paint the rock in a very basic paint scheme. A heavy dry brush of Celestra Grey and a heavy wash of Draconov Nightshade. These will do most of the work here and it will tint the rocks slightly blue which I like because it will contrast nicely with any blood effects that of course I'm gonna be there. And also it will set it a little bit apart of the rubble that's around it. I don't want to try and give the impression that this rock, this sort of altar that's there, is the same as all the rubble around it. I want this to be kind of magical, you know, it's it, it's corn, but a little bit of magic or, or occult or otherworldly uh, kind of fits corn too. And this way, it sets it apart, makes it a focus point on this, and it's not drowned out by the whole base and so on. Of course, I can always work on the base and give it a little bit of a dry brush as well, a little bit of wash as well, and sort of blend it together. But I quite like to set this apart. So after this, this is what it looks like. Pretty cool. The rock stands apart from the rubble. Like I said, I want it to be a more of a focal point. So it needs to be lighter as well. And with the blue tint, it's gonna contrast great with the red from the blood. Now there's a bunch of little details. I'm not gonna film all of this. I'm just gonna move along, paint all of this, and then we get to the griming and rusting and the blood effects. Then I'll get back to you. Just give me a second. 
and welcome back here we go all the little details are now painted in i got some more bone colors and some ropes some wood some chains the marine is now also on there and it's time for a bunch of things to make it more gory grimy and dirty first up streaking grime and uh, streaking grime i'm gonna use it but not too much i just want to make everything look a little bit more dirty and as if it's been there for a while and especially these cadian bodies here they are looking a bit too clean they don't look like they've been in combat you know this is how i would paint them if i try to get something very quickly on the table very decent looking but not very dirty and so here i have streaking grime it's very heavily diluted and i'm just gonna cover all of this here and i'm also gonna do a little bit on the stones especially here these sort of flat surfaces on the stone that are sort of a good way or a good place where dirt could settle in and grime can settle and then i'm actually going to use to the streaking grime to make some streaks of grime going down just to give these rocks a little bit more age make them look like they didn't just pop out of nowhere and they've have been here for a while there streaking grime done let's see if i can you know i'm really struggling making this look a bit better on camera so you guys can actually see it but uh, not now that's in focus so this way the rock looks a little bit older there's stuff streaking down it's been there for a while they didn't just come jump out of the ground and now with the streaking grime still wet i'm gonna start working with some rust streaks and i'm just gonna do this around the base of where these bits of rusted equipment lie so i want to make it look like it's been there for a while and if it's rusted out then it's already old and if it's rusted out in that position then you'll have rust streaking down from there and that's why rust streaks is a great paint for this and it also just gives me the opportunity to add a little bit more color i the more i look at this the more bored i get with this big chunk of rock that is just all the same doesn't look right to me and it's just a bit boring so with rust streaks i can make it a little bit better and once i'm finished that looks like this it's subtle but it's there and it makes the whole piece look a little bit older now it's time finally for some blood effects and for that i have two different kinds of blood i've got zombie gore and vampire thirst both are from duncan Rhodes's paint academy line the two tin coats line and it's basically you now vampire thirst is basically just blood for the blood god the other one is a little bit darker has a little bit of black or something in it and if you don't have this paint it's fine you can easily mix it with just some black and some blood for the blood god i'm going to start with the blood for the blood god and i'm going to start with the marine uh, because i want him to look relatively fresh like he, he hasn't been here too long and so first of course up here in where his head used to be a little bit of blood and then i'm going to start painting sort of blood streaking down from him i want to make it look like you know this guy is leaking and it's going all over the chains all over his legs and then it will drip down here around the helmet that he has so i'm just gonna make a little pool over here of this blood collecting underneath the marine there's a lot of surface area to cover a lot of stuff to do I'm first going to do some fresh blood also over the Cadians. They're fresh, of course. They, they're they still bodies. They're not skeletons and bones. So they're going to get quite a lot of blood effects around there too. But, you know, this takes a long time. So I'm just going to skip ahead and I'll show you when I'm a little bit further along. Because I want to show you guys what I'm doing. I'm looking for all the places on these torsos and arms where... Not on torso where an arm would be connected or the shoulder of an arm that would be connected to the torso or the legs. And that's where I'm going to put on some of this fresh blood. And I'm going to make it look again as if it's sort of seeping down into the soil. And so also gives a little outline around the bodies. And that also gives a little bit more contrast. Because you know the greens of the Cadians are contrasting nicely with the blood. So this way it also makes the body stand out a little bit more from the soil, from the ground. And doesn't make it blend too much together. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. Let me show you what it looks like here. Now I think I'm done with most of the fresh blood. And it's time for the more darker, the older blood. And for this, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a path through which these bodies would have gotten here. Because they didn't just drop out of the sky in perfect formation. That would be pretty cool, but you know that's not what happened. So I need to have some kind of path, maybe from the side here, from which these bodies were dragged here. And so with the darker blood, I'm just going to make a massive trail here that is showing some kind of work being done to the side until the bodies get over here and i'm gonna taper it to make it look like oh, this this a lot of space over there and then make it sort of sharper point as it gets closer as they get close to the point where they want to leave these bodies something like this 
Nah, and, and I'm gonna do that for a little bit more around these bodies as well, especially here around the skulls. I wanna, or the skulls, they're not skulls yet, they're just heads in helmets. But around the heads here, and I'm gonna just work along the bigger parts of the sort of fresh blood, like here. It's a little bit too bright. Add a little bit of the zombie gore on there, and it will blend together a bit better. And I just make it look a little, little less like it's all just one color. Same over here, where there's, you know, stuff leaking from the blood angel at the top. And I'm just going to make these little pools look a little bit darker and a little bit more variety in there. And again, this takes time. So let me show you what that looks like when it's finished. And I think I'm getting pretty close to finishing this little diorama, this little piece. Even the rock is crying blood. I just want to see if I can get some sort of scribbles on the rock face over here. Because that's still pretty bare. And so I got this extremely old, dirty, nasty dry brush that is hard from all the paint that I let dry up in there. And I'm just going to get a little bit of blood on there. And I'm just going to make some rough, some rough streaks going across these runes and across the rock. And see if I can get some kind of pattern going here. That's that's clearly somebody smearing the blood onto the rock. And I'll do the same over here. And I'll do some more of these marks. Just to make it look like somebody has been drawing with the blood onto the rock. And then my shrine to corn is done. And I'm pretty happy with the result. It's the first time I'm doing something this big. But I think it looks pretty cool. And it can definitely work somewhere on a table someday. I just played in a mega battle at the local game shop where I always play and this part piece was in there as well. Just without the blood because I still had to finish that. But I think it looks cool. The rock looks old, it looks nasty, it looks like it's been here for a while. At the same time the bodies are fresh, there's clearly somebody still at work here. Uh, the rock cries blood, seeps blood everywhere. There are skulls, maybe next time I'll get a little few more skulls. Maybe I can add a little pile of skull here and there. and Maybe some more chains in the, the ground as well. I feel like it's a little bit bare, but I am kind of done with this. Maybe I'll update it later and you'll have to check my Instagram to see if I can do something more with this. I'm on to the next kid bash, which is this little guy over here. But you gotta subscribe to see that.